Hello guys, welcome back. So in this very first project of our real-time application building, we're going to start with a normal C application and then we convert it to a real-time application. So let's get started. I'm going to open my Caillou Vision from here. And I'm going to create a new project. I'll come over here, project, new project. And for this project, we're going to be using the STM32F4 first. And then in the next video, I'll just show how to run the code on the nuclear, although it's basically the same because they have the same microcontroller. But the third video would be shown how to run the code on the Texas Instrument TM4C123. So in this folder, I'm going to name it STM32F4. Um, I'll just call the project, project one actually, and create the other folders in there, project one. This is going to be a blinky project. And in here, I'm going to create three folders. STM. And then I'm going to create one for nucleo. STM, 32F4, nucleo. And um, yeah, this is the first time I'm doing this. In the next project, I wouldn't be creating all these folders. I'll make sure I create them before we um, before we do the project. So this one, I just name it Tiva C123. And I'm going to come into the disco because this will run the first experiment. And then I'll call the project RTX Blinky and I'll just find my MCU from here is STM32F411VET. So um, just look for your particular disco MCU or nuclear MCU. There are different MCUs for the disco and nuclear boards. So just check the MCU chip on your nuclear or disco board and find the, um, the particular number of your MCU. And there are some um, other ones with F4, 0, and then some other numbers. But mine says F411 VET, so I'm selecting this. It's basically the same. I think there are just about two differences in um, this version and the other version, but the code should run um, smoothly with no, um, no problem at all. So once that is done, I'll click OK. And over here, I'll select CMS's core. And under device, I'll select startup, right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to my target, which is STM32 F4 Disco. And over here, I'll just call this application. And I'm going to create two files. I'll start by creating um, the main file. I'll create just one first. Let's take it step by step. To allow easy access to the um, to the registers, in order to control the LEDs, I'm going to create some symbolic names that we use to access the registers. Um, from the STM32F4 Disco um, user guide, we know that the red LED is connected to the GPIO port, and it's connected to pin 14 of that port, the GPIO port D, sorry, pin 14. And the green is connected to GPIO port D pin 12 and blue is connected to port D pin 15 and orange is connected to the 13 pin of GPIO port D. So we're just going to create some symbolic names to um, represent these particular pins. Before we do that, uh, let's add the header file for a particular board. I right click and then come to insert include file and then I include this file here. So I'm just going to use the define statement to create these symbolic names and I'm going to declare red, like I said, as I'll shift to 14 and then I'll declare, I'll define over here, green as 12, 13 as 15 and um, Blue, uh, blue as 15 and orange as 13. So these bits, these bits number are the, uh, are the bits on the GPIO output data register. But in order to set these pins as output pins, we have to access the, um, the mode register. 
and the mode register assigns different bits to each LED so we have to create symbolic names for those as well. In the mode register the red LED is controlled by bit 28 so I'm just going to create a new symbolic name called red bit and then I'm going to shift bit 28 and I'm going to do the same for the rest. Um, bit 24 in the mode register is used to control LED green and then bit 26 is used to control the orange LED and bit number 30 controls the blue LED so we're going to create symbolic names for these as well just like this so now um, we have this the last thing we do in order to access the GPIO port of course we have to enable clock access to that GPIO port in the AHP1 GPIO D is connected and to enable the clock for GPIO D, we have to enable bit number three in the AHP1. So we're going to create a symbolic name for that too. I'm just going to call this one GPIO D clock like this. It's very simple and straightforward. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Yeah. So once this is done, we can go ahead and write out our main function. And I'm going to start with int main. This avoid function, of course. And um, first thing we do, we initialize the GPIO and then we set the pins as output pins and then we access the output data register to test whether it actually works. And to initialize the, um, the port D, we access the AHP1 like this and then this would initialize only port D for us. And then to set um, the pins as output we access the mode register and this will set all of them as outputs like this so that's what it looks like so then we can just go to the while one loop the infinite loop and then um, access the output data register and turn on an LED so I could just come here sorry just come here while one this and over here we could just say GPIOT output data register let's say we want to start by toggling LED number LED color blue so I could just come over here and see like this and um, we can test it out by rebuilding the project and then um, before we download we have to set um, our debug settings I come over here drop down menu I'm testing on the STM32 board it uses the ST link debugger I select this and I come over here to settings I choose flash download and then I tick this box here so that when it downloads it you know automatically resets so that I don't need to press the reset button to find the changes so after that I press OK and then OK then I come over here and just click to download onto my board. And as you can see, as you can see, the blue LED is turned on, although I'm using the toggle operator here. Of course, you wouldn't see it going on and off because there's no delay. To see a toggle, we can create some form of pseudo delay um, by using a for loop. We can just, I'll declare a variable here, int i, and I can just come over here and say for i equals zero and i is less than let's say one how many zeros let's use five zeros one two three four five i plus plus this is just to um make the cpu run these cycles to give us you know a blinky effect um, we'll create proper timers later of course we are going to write real-time applications uh, this is just to test the board and as you can see it's blinking now so yeah, our settings for the LEDs look good. Um, you can try on your own by changing the colors. You can just type. Um, so we're going to abstract this a bit more. We're going to create an LED.c and LED.h file and keep the code to access the LEDs there so that we can you know, separate it. And then once that is done, we convert the project to a real-time application. So um, I'm going to continue by creating two files. I'm going to create the .h edit file for LED and then the .c file. I'll right-click over here and then add a new item to group. 
and then I'll select C and then I'll give the file a name as simple as LED right and then I'll come over here right click again add new item and I'll select H and then give the file a name LED again like this but the .h file is just on the disk now it doesn't exist as part of our project so we have to add it and we do that by double clicking here and then we can come down here and then select all files and then we see the dot h here we double click to add to our project so i'm going to double click we click here to exit and let's start with the dot h file so i'm going to use an if and def statement um, to prevent duplicate addition if and def underscore underscore leds underscore h well the file is called led not leds if not defined define underscore underscore LED underscore H then just end if and what we want to do is we start by just cutting this hair and then putting this hair and then we can come to our C file over here and then include our LED dot H and we can come here and then bring all the um, the symbolic names that we created we can keep it here we can make them only accessible to the LED um, to the LED module so I'm going to cut and put a hair like this and we can um, we can create some APIs to toggle the various LEDs so we can see we can create some API such as um, void red toggle something to toggle the red and it's going to accept no arguments and the only thing we need to do is I'm um, going to GPIOT and we want to access the ODR register Want to use the the toggle operator like this and then red right so if we call this function we should be able to toggle the red and then we can do the same for blue green and orange as time goes on if we need a different api to turn off the leds we just come here and create it and then call it from the main.c file so i'll do it for the other two and then it follows green the same way orange so we can um, also create LED init API um, to initialize the LED from the main function sorry uh, my keyboard light is confusing because I'm running Windows on my Mac machine when a caps light is on it means the caps is actually off that's why sometimes I press lower caps and then go back to upper caps in Mac it works perfectly but when I'm running my windows on my Mac machine I have this problem so that's why I always write a small letter and then clean and write a capital or vice versa so please do pardon me I'll sort that out later um, so there's this void here it's a void function and what we want is to bring the initialization code from main um, this uh, this here the one that you know turns on the clock as well as set it as output we just put over here and, um, and to make this to make these APIs accessible to the um, to the main.c function put them here and make them global we just put all the toggle prototypes here so that other files will be able to toggle the LED as well as the um, the init function we can put it over here as well and then when we come to main we could just say now sorry now include led.h uh, oh yeah we have this here because i don't know if you're aware yeah we have this here because this is a local global it's only accessible to just the functions in this particular file and then um, because we didn't put in the .h file it cannot be accessed here but we don't want here we don't want it here we already created the api to toggle the led so we don't need this if we want to toggle the blue led all we have to do is blue blue toggle like this because that that is um that is a public global because it exists in the interface file the dot h file here right so um let's load our code and test okay zero errors mm, 
it's not too nice to see two warnings that solve it just come here you have to always leave at least one line at the end of the file in order to prevent the warnings so I'll come here uh, this one has one line I'll leave an extra um, yeah it should be fine now we have zero errors zero warnings um, and I'm going to download onto the board yeah um, so before we download we have to initialize of course LED init and I'll download here like this uh, I have LEDs in it. Why is it saying LEDs in it? Interesting. Oh, I call the API LEDs in it. Mm, let's see. So yeah, there's a mistake. The function name is LED in it, not LEDs. As you can see here, LED in it. So I call it here and LED in it. Now it's fine. Okay, so we download onto the board. And now, yeah, it's working just like before. So now it's all cleaned up. Um, in the next lesson, we are going to convert this into a real-time operating system. So um, I'll see you in the next lesson. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the, um, in the questions section. Or you can send me a message. Yeah, I'll see you.